This is Rob Peary with the Coffee Runs Deep podcast, where we interview coffee farmers, coffee roasters, and we share their stories. I truly hope you enjoy the experience. What's up, brewing, everyone? Our guest today, Nate Goins, just started a coffee trailer, and he dives into his journey of building out the trailer, getting through all the permit process, hiring employees, his struggles, and then he takes us through his numbers on exactly how much everything costs from start to opening day. Nate and I also went to boot camp together back in the day, and it was a pleasure to catch up with him, and it's going to be nice to share his story. Hope you all enjoy. Welcome to the Coffee Runs Deep podcast. I'm your host, Rob Peary, and today I have one of my long-lost friends, Mr. Goins, on. Nate and his wife just recently launched a coffee trailer business a few weeks ago. So, Nate, what's going on, dude? Hey, brother. I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate it, dude. So tell me about yourself, and uh, let's kind of let's get into your little coffee journey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So a um, little bit about me. Uh, right now, I'm uh, actually this year I turned 40 years old. I've got two girls and uh, married now going on. Uh, let's see, let's do the math here. 2010. So to almost 12 years now um, and active duty Navy currently. Uh, and then just kind of throughout my time in the Navy have, uh, you know, socially drank coffee around the world and had a passion for it, but didn't really have an education of it. I just enjoyed the atmosphere and, and the taste of coffee. Um, and so some things have kind of uh, with the military have pushed me into the direction of opening up a coffee shop. So uh, here we are, um, you know, doing a podcast and, you know, we're about a month into uh, opening up a Bide Coffee, a coffee trailer. Um, and so, yeah, it's been good, but uh, uh, a, a fun journey to say the least. Heck yeah, dude. No, fun fact, me and Nate actually went to boot camp together way back in the day. What was that 2007? Was that yep, 2007? Yep. So how, mu- how much longer do you have left then? You're doing 20? Uh, if, yeah, if I, if I end up staying in, I'm, I'm at 15 now. Um, okay. So I'll have five years left um, in that. Um, but uh, yeah, five more years is, is the goal. Um, and then get out and hopefully continue doing coffee business. Nice, dude. It's hard to, it's crazy to even think like that was not even that long ago, but it's about to be 20 years. All right. So you dove off into the coffee trailer business. Uh, what made you go that route and what was your experience in coffee kind of before that? Sure. Um, so the reason why we ended up, uh, opening up a coffee trailer is, uh, currently, like I said, just a minute ago in the Navy. Um, and just with some of the mandates that were going on, uh, we decided to, um, you know, just kind of stand for what uh, we're Christ followers. So what the the Holy Spirit was kind of convicting us of. Um, and so we decided to stand against some of the mandates that were going on. Um, and then I don't sit around and wait. Uh, and so I'm like, hey, you know what, if the, if the Navy is going to separate me, uh, we need to have we need to have something uh, in place, you know, to provide for the family. Um, we just had uh, at the time my youngest girl was only, let's see, four months old. So I had two kids just moved here from Guam um, to Florida. And uh, yeah, so then all that comes around and we're just kind of like, hey, what are we going to do? And I, I spent a lot of time praying about it and just kind of seeking direction on on what we should do. And uh, is a coffee shop a viable option? Uh, and I, I still remember to this day uh, here in the house, breaking it to my wife, like, hey, we should open up a coffee shop. We've talked about it. You know, that was a retirement plan, but we should do that now. And she was like, you're out of your mind, um, you know, and uh, uh, so, yeah, so that kind of pushed us into um, into opening up a coffee shop. And then the area that we're in right now um, is one of the third and, and don't quote me on the numbers, but it's right around there. But the third fastest growing town in the state of Florida and one of the top 10 in the country. So um, it's just bustling. And there's, you know, once we got here, we're like, man, there's just there's there's a coffee shop here, but it's like slash ice cream shop. Um and I, I just had a lot of good coffee around the world. And I'm like, we, there's got to be some good coffee that comes here. So why can't we do that? Um, however, the reason why we chose the trailer is because, you know, prices are sky high. There's not a lot of structure here, um, infrastructure to put a shop into. And if you, um, you know, if you're going to do that, you've got to wait for the buildings to be built. And they, because it is uh, growing so fast, uh, they want a, a large amount of money um, to, uh, to open up a business, um, you know, doing the build out rent, what have you. And as a brand new coffee shop, you know, that's really hard to come by. Um, and so we decided like, Hey, why don't we build a trailer? So that was in October then of 2021, right? When, when you called me? 
Yeah. Uh, so I called you in September. September. Um, yep. September timeframe and just said, Hey Rob, uh, I'm thinking about doing this. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy how fast you like executed on. I remember thinking like whenever you first called me, I was like, cause some people call or, you know, they, they want to call and it's like, you can tell like they want to do something, but they don't have that like ambition or whatever to actually go out and do it. And I remember I already kind of knew you, you know, before. So it was mm -hmm. like, I knew whenever you called and you already kind of had a lot of things already kind of planned out in your head, what you're planning sure. on doing, where you were getting the resources from this, that, and the other. And, uh, I'm just, I was really surprised how fast you, not surprised, but just it's unusual for somebody to move as fast as you did. So you went from pretty much September phone call to when, when did y'all open in March? Uh, April, April 2nd was our soft opening. Okay. So you built out a whole trailer, got all your permits and everything. And did you, did you start with employees or? Um, we did. Yep. Uh, okay. so I originally was planning on, you know, running it the majority of the time myself. Um, and then once things have, or how things have kind of panned out with, with the Navy, um, I've got a business now and I'm also full-time Navy. So I'm like, okay, well, how do I balance this? Um, and it was, you know, it was kind of a no brainer to, to bring in some employees, but uh, a big concern of mine, um, I, you know, I want product over profit, right? I want people and I, I kind of lead in the coffee shop in the way that I do at work, right? I want, I want people to be emotionally and mentally invested in, into my business, right? So I give them a piece of that. I, I let them in and say, hey, you know, let's talk about ideas, right? I don't have all the right answers, especially, you know, where I'm at now, because when I decided to open up a coffee shop, I've never you know, ran my own business. I actually had no clue even how to pull a proper shot of espresso when this was an idea. Right. And I'll never forget the first coffee I served to my wife on, on the, uh, I've got a Breville, um, uh, barista express served it to her. She was like, you might want to think of another plan. And I'm like, Oh no. Um, but I just have the type of personality where like, I'm not going to stop. Um, and that's, uh, that's been a benefit. Uh, it stressed me out a lot. Uh, but if I can control that right and harness that um, drive, uh, it's kind of it's what has allowed me to open as quick as I did. Um, but, you know, it's not having that education at all. Um, and then, you know, God kind of brought the right people into my life. Uh, employee wise, I actually had a lady reach out to me. Um, and she's been great. Uh, but she was a barista in Alaska and in Washington State, you know, and, you know, Pacific Northwest. It's like the Mecca of coffee in the U S right. Yeah. Um, and so it was really nice to have her because she was able to help me with some things. Um, but I'd self-educated a lot, um, before I, before, um, I ever hired anybody as I was building out the trailer. I mean, you know, talking to you, watching YouTube videos, figuring out the, you know, essentially the alchemy, right. The chemistry of how to pull a proper, proper espresso shot, um, you know, dialing it in temperatures, grind size, dosing it out, all that stuff. Um, and man, I just spent countless hours doing that. So I wanted to be be somewhat prepared to have employees that I could, you know, because I want them to have confidence in me as an owner. Right. Um, and so that's how I've been able to one hire the employees, but like I said, you know, kind of circling back around to give them ownership into what we're doing um, and for them to feel a part of our family, you know? So when I sit down, I'm, I just hired another lady. Um, and one of my biggest things is like, I want you to want to work for us and we want to, to have you as an employee. So check out my social media, you know, go to Instagram, go to Facebook. Um, it, let me know if you want to be a part of what we have, you know? Um, and I just, a lot of people, it is just going to be a job. Um, but we're going to take care of our employees. Um, we're going to give them an awesome environment to work in. I'm going to challenge them. Um, but I'm also, like I said, I want to give them a piece of that. I want them to be invested in and give us ideas of how to do things, how to make things better. You know, um, I feel like the, the more people that I surround myself with being a part of a team, you just find more investment. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty dang cool, dude. So as far as like building out the trailer, then did you have any help with that or how, how did that work? Or did you hire somebody to kind of build out or did, did, did you do most of the work yourself? Um, I did most of the work myself, actually. So we, there's phenomenal, uh, his name's Taylor. Um, he owns Jojo's Express in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and so Lindsay and I, we were really toying around with the idea of like, you know, do I've we want to do his a, YouTube videos? I think. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Okay, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, so we reached out to him because we stumbled on them. Uh, we were Googling like, you know, custom coffee shops and, you know, custom coffee trailers. And we just kept finding, you know, not, not 
by any means nothing wrong with just your normal concession trailer that's turned into a coffee shop but we really wanted to to bring something special and we stumbled upon his trailer and uh, i kind of watched some of those videos i'm like man that's exactly what i want to do um so i reached out to him and he was super gracious um he's actually kind of been a mentor like you have um with getting back to me and just kind of helping me through this process and so we saw his trailer and we're like that's what we want our trailer to look like at least just the structure of it right the shell of it um and so we reached out to him and he was he was he was great he was like hey man this is how we build it um and so that's how we kind of came up with the idea to to build the trailer um and so with his help and i had a buddy um that does some custom bathroom work um here on 30a and if any if you're familiar with 30a um it's some really high-end homes along the whole you know panhandle of florida so um his his um experience in framing was literally like wall-to-wall -wall framing right it wasn't it wasn't framing a house and it surely wasn't framing a trailer that's constantly not level right you know different air pressures maybe the ground's a little higher on one side um and so i sent him uh these videos from taylor um at jojo's express or uh, espresso and and I was like, hey, man, let me know if you think you can build this. If not, I'm going to I'm just going to reach out to a concession stand, you know, trailer type thing and try to get some, you know, custom like uh, graphics and things done on, on the outside. And just when I thought that he was not going to, you know, say that he could do it, he's like, hey, man, I think we could do this. And I'm like all right, let's do it, you know? Um, and so he helped me out a lot. Um, he definitely, I mean, there were times where we literally, you know, when you, when you frame in a trailer, um, you, nothing's level, you know? So you have to do X squared. So that means you're going from, you know, you're running diagonal lines um, to, to get the right measurements. And, right. You know, we had, we literally had ratchet straps hooked to my truck and to the frame of, of the structure, bringing it into level right or not level but into square um and so just you know making mistake and then have to kind of walk it back and then build it again and it was just this constant back and forth so he helped out a ton with the framing of it um and then my wife Lindsay, she she's the mastermind behind the design you know of like the the paint scheme like how the just everything aesthetically about the trailer is is her um and so she was able to kind of sketch up a picture and she's like this is what i want it to look like and so he helped me with the exterior and then uh, pretty much myself and then my father-in-law helped out a ton and my brother-in-law and we just decked out the inside and just did it really high end you know like shiplap walls high-end cabinets um and you know just nice machines and we have this massive serving window that's um it's almost 10 feet wide it almost takes up the whole side of the trailer um and then it's about four i think about four and a half feet tall and we really wanted um you know and compliments to jojo's espresso right he it, this was his idea he wanted to uh you know almost like you're walking into a kitchen right to kind of have that cafe type feel um, and so we just made this massive window and it's sliding glass. So when you look in there, you see everything. You see the countertops, you see the cabinets, you see the espresso machine. Um, and so, yeah, had a, had a, if I, I would not have been able to do it by myself without a doubt. It certainly wouldn't have been done in, you know, six and a half months. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll say y'all's design is like on point, dude. I've been, cause I've been looking at a lot of trailers here the past like two weeks and I keep looking back at y'all's and I'm like, man, that, that like y'all almost need to go into the business of making those things. Cause that <laughs> one's beautiful, dude. Thank you. Oh y'all did had, a dang good job with it. Thank you very much. Um, I just actually had a guy come up to the window on Saturday and he's like, Hey man, uh, can you build me a trailer? And I'm like, no, <laughs> it was a thousand dollars, huh? Yeah, man. Um, you know, but if I would have had somebody else build this for me, it would have cost. It would have been oh, too yeah. expensive. Um, but you know, fortunately, you know, like we kind of talked about with with the timing, um, and I've I've listened to um, uh, the gentleman you had on a couple uh, episodes ago, Keys to the Shop, uh, Joe. Def uh, man, I can't remember his last name. Yeah, yeah De phenomenal. So I've listened to him a ton, and I've heard him specifically say like you know, when people come up to him, and it might have been on your podcast. Um, and they're like, Hey, I want to op open a coffee shop in six months. He's like, Whoa, 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 pump the brakes. Like, let's look out a year. Um, but my catalyst was I was losing, I thought I was losing my job, right? You know, and so I, I didn't have an option, my back was to the wall. Um, and so yeah, so if I didn't have those guys with me, I wouldn't have been able to do it um, in six months. Yeah. 
Yeah. So as far as like building it and everything, did you build it and work with the permits and like your health department and all that as you were going along or was it something you had to get everything done with the permit side before you even started or like, sure. how did all that work? How long did that take? So the, so in the state of Florida, um, because I'm not serving any TCS food, so uh, time temp control for safety, um, you know, foods that, uh, you know, uh, present a foodborne uh, illness, right? Because we just serve coffees and teas right now. I'm inspectable by the Department of Agriculture. So I'm not inspect, I'm, I don't get inspected by the Department of Health. Um, so the, the parameters that I fall in or, or what they come and inspect me on are much more minimal than it is like the Department of Health, right? So there really wasn't, um, there are a few things, you know, some odds and ends, like, you know, my gray water tank had to be 15% uh, greater than my fresh water tank. Fresh water tank had to be at an angle, you know, little things like that, but nothing really with the structure, um, electrical, anything like that, nothing certified by the Department of Transportation, um, but I was in contact with my, um, basically the regional uh, uh, rep for the Department of Agriculture um, to be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Are, are you good with that? You know, because they're not our enemy, right? I, I want, I didn't want there to be any, any unknowns, right? I wanted to know everything that I did. And it probably got to the point where I was a little bit of, an, you know, annoying because I'm like, hey, can I actually have, you know, PVC shiplap on my back walls, because I know that it's, you know, it's not a smooth surface. He's like, nope, you're good. You know, Department of Agriculture, a um, little bit different again, if we're preparing foods in there, but we're not. Um, so that didn't, that that really didn't play too much into how I was building it, because the, the requirements were fairly small. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, after the trailer was built, that was very quick too. Um, you know, that was just hitting them up and set the Department of Agriculture and saying, hey, we're ready. Um, here's here's the required documents. I can't remember exactly what it was. They needed a few different things. And within like a week, I had an inspector out there. Um, and with it being a brand new trailer, super, you know, squeaky clean, it was, it was a really quick process. He just checked a few things and said, cool, man, you're good to go. Nice. Um, you know, three, three compartment sink like that. Right. Um, and, you know, having properly labeled sinks, um, hand washing sink, uh, commissary, right. For kind of what we, you and I've talked about uh, as a trailer, you have to have a commissary. So a place where you can get your water, um, you know, dumps your gray water, um, store your, your consumables, store your milk, um, things like that. Uh, so they look to see like, hey, do you have a certified commissary? Um, and that was one of the big requirements that they were that they needed before they did the inspection. Yeah. And you just said you found somebody like in town kind of work, work with you or whatever. Yeah. Um, being here in the small town, um, it's it, if I didn't have some of the business owners here, I wouldn't I wouldn't be where I'm at. Um, so a uh, lady called her, her name's Veronica. She owns uh, Veronica Health Crunch. And so she has this really phenomenal granola that um, is gluten free. And she's got a, a, a place up here that she where she makes her granola. And so um, I was able to get linked up with her through another good friend of mine that owns Register Bee Farms here in Freeport. And he's like, hey, give her a call. She's helped me out when I first started. So I called her up. She's like, hey, no problem. Come up here. You can store your stuff here. Um, you know, bring the commissary agreement up here. I'll take care of it. So within a day, um, I had, I had, you know, had reached out to her and she's like, yeah, whatever you need, I'll take, I'll help you out. I understand what it's like to try to start a business. So I've had a lot of that here. Um, and so I've just leaned into that. Um, but yeah, you know, you, it's, it, it made it easier too, because she's, she's inspected by the department of health. And so she's already on their books is, you know, in good standing. So they didn't have to actually go inspect her. Um, they were just like, okay, cool. We see that you've been inspected, you know, this last time, and, you know, I'm, I'm speculating on how that went, but they didn't have to come check her out because she was already in good standing with the department of health. Yeah. That's pretty cool, dude. Yeah. I've, I've kind of learned the more I kind of get into all this stuff, I realize like the power of networking mm. and just like going out and meet the people, like, like pick up the phone, call, email, hit up and just see if like, somebody can like help you out and give you the information. Most people are usually pretty happy to help out, you know, cause they, Absolutely. we feel like we've all kind of been in the same boat and yeah. it's kind of like that chain, you know, like I'm reaching up, but I'm trying to pull somebody else up behind me. We're all trying to get to the same place. Sure. You know? So that's, yeah. that's super cool that they're kind of, you know, pretty mm -hmm. little, pretty good little community out there. So, yeah, yeah, it's been good. And, and that's been, you know, kind of the same in the coffee world. And you even said it to me the first time you and I talked um, because you put me into contact with, um, some folks that you knew and you're like, Hey man, ask questions. And so the majority, 
the majority of coffee shops that I've walked into or owners that I've um, approached have been, you know, super responsive um, and, and wanting to help out, you know, um, yeah. there's, there's only been a few that haven't responded and that's okay. You know, they, they've, they've got other priorities and, and, and uh, you know, I just want to, I want to be able to help other people because if I didn't have the help, I wouldn't be where I'm at, you know, so right. it's kind of, you exactly. know, kind of repay. Yeah, that's the other thing too, as far as responding. Like I know there's probably emails or messages that I haven't responded to just because I you read it, you know, babies, whatever, you run over there and you just forget about it. You never so it's like sometimes like it's not even so much that somebody didn't respond. It's like it could have been just simply forgotten about it or whatever. So you got all the regulations, everything. So that was actually a pretty easy process for you then it seems like uh yeah. it seems like that's the daunting task for everybody else. Like everybody's like, Oh, the regulations and the permits, but Florida, yeah. y'all have a pretty good little system for it then. Yeah, it it, it has a bad, and you know, it varies from state to state, um, yeah. without a doubt, because uh, I've definitely had some people reach out and like, you know, mention shiplap, like, hey, how are you able to do the shiplap? Because I think, and I think she was from Texas and she's like, I'm not even, sir, I'm just serving coffees and teas, um, you know, and I can't, I can't have that, you know, so it really, you know, I, it, the biggest thing is just reaching out to the people that are going to inspect you and say, Hey, right. man, are we going to do this? Cause like I said, they're, they're not our enemies. Right. Um, and it's nothing that I want to hide from them. I want to bring them into my team and, and let, let's work together to make your job easier and to make my job easier. You know, yeah. um, I will say, you know, that, that may be the hardest thing for, for some folks, for me, I was so focused on, on the build out and learning the art of coffee um, that I kind of neglected the business side, right? I'd, I'd started my LLC, but that was kind of it. And then, um, you know, uh, let's see the first quarter rolled around of fiscal year 22 and I get a letter in the mail and they're like, uh, you haven't, you haven't paid your taxes. Like you're delinquent. I'm like, uh Oh, you know, like I should probably figure out the administrative side of my business. Cause I was so focused on everything else, um, that I, I kind of neglected it, but I called up pretty quick and, and, you know, again, kind of called, I just asked questions, you know, I called the, 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 uh, Florida department, um, yeah, the state department and just ask questions. Right. And they were like, Hey, let me help you out. Um, so just asked a ton of questions and I just wasn't afraid to, you know? Um, so then I sorted out the business side <laughs> or the administrative side of the business as well, but that took a little bit longer, um, and a little bit more thought than I had prepared for, uh, to be honest. Yeah. So then you also, so you got all that done, your trailers inspected, you're ready to go. Did, you hired employees before you launched or, or did you start I did. on your own first? Yeah, I hired them before I launched. Let's see. I hired them. Um, I did my interviews, I, I think around February timeframe. Cause I kind of saw the writing on the wall of, I might not be able to be there enough. Um, and what I didn't want, there was a coffee shop, uh, that was in this little town, um, which I don't think I, I plugged that at the beginning, uh, Freeport, Florida is where we're located. Um, but, uh, they had a shop and one of the, and I, I got a hold of the owners because I'm like, okay, well that shop, what it failed. Um, it, it wasn't successful. So I'm like, I want to talk to them. I want to figure out what happened. Right. I want to know what my left and right limits are to, to be successful here, at least maybe not do what was happening there. And one of their biggest things is that they had a single employee. Um, they were open, uh, you know, Monday through Friday. So in the mornings, you've got people that are wanting to get to work, right? So when they come and they wait in line for 30 or so minutes, um, that's, you're going to have really unhappy customers, right? So I'm like, well, I don't want to do this by myself because I know how long it takes to sit there, especially with our trailer, right? Our trailer is, um, uh, six foot wide by, uh, 16 foot long, the, the interior. So having to take orders from one side, put it in the computer, do the change, you know, swipe the credit card, go build the drink, then hand out the drink. You know, we're looking at like two and a half, three minutes. And that's for a single drink with one person in there. Right. I'm like, I can't do that. I'm going to lose business. So, um, I knew pretty quickly that I needed to hire on, um, some more folks and, uh, um, so currently my brother-in-law works for us. And then, um, like I said, another, another lady that, um, she's a military spouse, her husband's here. Um, and they just, like I said, moved from Washington state about a year ago. Um, and so I've got two employees now and I just hired another lady that I'm really excited about because she worked in a really high end coffee shop in Indiana. Um, and, uh, I got really big into latte art, right. And just, just really being passionate about coffee. And so she's, she's right up there with us, you know, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before. Like, 
I, that's the people I want to attract, right? Like I want to have people that care about coffee that literally can sit there and answer every question you got, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, she'll be coming on. So now I'll have four, um, because, you know, I'm, I'm finding out that, um, you know, even two people, when we do a thousand dollar day, if I can have three people in there, the more, the better, because the barista was kind of taking drinks and putting it, you know, putting the lids on, putting the sleeves on and having to call out names. And that takes 10, 10 to 12 seconds, right? So if you're doing that for every single drink, you can imagine how your cups start to stack up right on your line. Um, so yeah, so more employees, the better. Um, but it, you know, one of the things I'm finding with employees is that I have in my mind, like this, this perfect employee that's passionate about coffee that, you know, wants to, uh, to continue to grow their education in coffee and I kind of have to find a balance because I'm not going to find me, right? I'm, I, and I, the, the, I've gotten pretty close to it with my employees. Um, they're all really passionate about coffee. Um, but I have to kind of, I have to uh, kind of temper my expectations, if that makes sense. Um, and, you know, ultimately as a business owner, nobody is going to care for your business like you do. They're not going to be as passionate as you are. Um, but if I can find somebody as half as passionate as I am, I'm doing pretty good, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's the thing too about like the community where like what you're in in the military, like y'all's expectations are are on a different level. Mm. So like to come into the civilian world, like you do have to, you kind of, you kind of got to lower it because you won't be able to hire anybody to your expectations. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I can definitely see that. And I can definitely see where that's a struggle. I, I, I kind of see that when a lot of people get out of the military, that's kind of been, you know, there's higher tiers and stuff like that where, it's you know you're kind of having to to deal with people that don't show up on time and stuff like that where where you're at it's not tolerated at all sure. but where some places like you know the where the average person works it's kind of common right um so yeah that's that's definitely one of those things it's like yeah. uh how do you how do you work around that you know yeah you know and the, and that's one of the hard things like and to kind of address that on 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 two two levels um one employees, right? I've had a few people reach out to me that I like were super proactive, had the credentials I was looking for. Um, you know, up until the day I was supposed to have a sit down interview with them, like responding to me, like I'll be there. And then I show up and they never show up, no call, no show. Um, and the more that I talk about this with people in local businesses, they're like, it's a problem, you know? So I pay really well. I'm paying for trust and loyalty, right? I mean, my uh, my, my baristas walk out of there, um, around like after tips, probably anywhere between 25 to $30 an hour, um, to work a trailer. Right. Because I need, I, I want to attract that type of people. I also want to, I need trust and loyalty because I'm turning my business over essentially, you know, every day because I go to the Navy. Um, and so as a brand new business, you know, I, it, at least in my um, experience, you know, because I, I was a general manager of, of two really successful restaurants before I joined the Navy. Um, but it, your employees, if they're not happy, then your customers aren't going to be happy. Right. Um, and so they're kind of the front lines. Um, and so my thought was like, man, I'm about to launch this business. And within a month or two, this could be ruined. You know, if I don't find the right people, I don't provide the right environment. Um, and so it's been a struggle to do that. Um, but on the other side of that, um, you know, if there's any, any other, you know, military members out there that, or post, you know, retired guys that are, are working this type of business, like, I also have to remind myself, like you said, I can't come into my shop and run it the way I run my, my boys in my shop, right? Like on, on the Navy side, um, because I'll shut people down, right? There's a, there's, like you said, there's a higher standard that and a, an expectation of what I do at, in the Navy. And I have to re remind myself of that, right? Self-evaluation is huge. So I'm constantly like, Hey, I can't have that type of environment here, but where can I find a happy medium? Um, and so that's kind of been an interesting, like speaking to a lot of people and kind of getting some feedback of like, Hey, how do I do this a little differently, um, to where I can create an environment where they don't feel, um, you know, because it's, how do I put this? Like, it's easy to, to switch to military mate. Um, but I need to kind of, I've got to turn that off when I come to the coffee shop. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. It's like that attitude works in certain places. And then at other places I've kind of learned too, like it does not work. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. you, you gotta be able to like turn it on and turn it off or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
So you open, all right, you have your employees and stuff there. What's a day one like? You you show up, like how early are you showing up? And like, how, how did you kind of plan where you was first going to be located at? So we ended up, um, I wanted to do some a soft opening um, just to kind of run through our POS system a little more, um, work out any kinks with our workflow. Um, and so we did an invite only. Uh, and we basically set up beside a little local bakery um, that, uh, that we had, we'd been talking to the owners a little bit. I got permission from the land owners of the building. Um, we're like, Hey, you know what, why don't we set up beside, uh, this local bakery? So we'll get some foot traffic. So we did invite only, but I also, I opened it up to anybody that just happened to stumble on us. Right. Um, but we weren't posting it on social media, um, or anything like that, because I knew there was a lot of things that, because I'd never done this before that I needed to work through and I needed to work through it with people that already like, they would be okay if their drinks weren't great, you know, or if it yeah. took 20 minutes to get a drink out. Um, and so, yeah, I showed up, we opened up at nine. I think I showed up like two hours before to open up a trailer, you know, so I, by eight fifteen, I was ready to go, you know, but I, I planned for any sort of anything that could go wrong. Right. Um, and that's just kind of how I've been brought up in military is like, you always plan, you know, to have different COAs like, well, if this goes wrong, do I have time allotted to, to be able to fix this and still open on time? Right. Or if I, you know, the, of course, the first morning that I, that I'm open, I come out and my, my, uh, rear tire on my truck is almost flat, you know, and I'm like, what, you know, like, come on my first day. Um, but uh, it was good. So we did, uh, we just did a soft opening and we, we probably did like 300 and I think it was like $350. Um, but that's where I wanted, right? Because we completely ended up changing a lot of our workflow in there. We, you know, we used to take orders if you're looking at the trailer from the left side and then you would pick it up on the right, but we had to completely shift and take orders from the right and, you know, hand the orders out to the left because uh, the, uh, cashier and the barista were kind of bumping up against each other you know we we're just kind of in each other's way so we changed a ton after the first day um that was a Saturday I wanted to do a Saturday because I'm like people aren't going to be in a rush to get to work you know I feel like some people do work on Saturdays but for the most part if you're coming to hang out at the coffee trailer you're probably not in a big hurry yeah. so I didn't want to do it on a weekday um and then that following um that following Tuesday, we opened up uh, in, a, in a neighborhood that we live here called Hammock Bay. And it's got about, uh, I would say probably around 6,600 people that live here. And we've got, you know, a sports complex, we've got pools, a gym, a general store. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot going on in here. Um, and so uh, we opened up, I ended up having, um, <laughs> I had three employees, but it was my, it was my, my brother-in-law, his first day uh on the job and we ended up selling almost eleven hundred dollars just in coffee and tea Dang. on our on our first day opening um and so that was wild you know like but when we had made some shifts and fortunately we did but after you know two or three openings we we ended up finding our flow and how things kind of needed to be organized and laid out um but yeah so our first uh our first legitimate day open we did about eleven hundred dollars and again we don't sell pastries we don't do anything other than coffee and tea. Um, and then our very next Saturday, uh, we ended up doing almost $1,300 in just coffee and tea. And that's gross. That's not, that's not pre-tax. That's after tax tips come out. Um, so that's a lot of, and that was just he and I, um, and I don't know how we did it. We literally, by the time when I opened up that serving window to the time I closed it, we were going hundred miles an hour in there. Um, you know, and one of the things that, Sorry if I'm kind of going off. I get so excited. Oh no, I, I like it, dude. You got um, me excited. One of the cool things about having that massive window, right, is that like when people are when they're waiting a little bit longer, and you can see the people that are making your drinks or making your food, whatever, you see them back there just literally going as fast as they can, and they're working as hard as they can. People kind of slow down a little bit and they're not so upset because they, they, they see that you're putting in the effort, right. Versus being like, ah, oh, take your order and kind of go over there, pull a shot, yeah. steam some milk. Um, but they literally see us going like this, you know, and they're, and I literally have people like, you guys are awesome. Like you guys are working so hard in there and they can see that. Right. Um, and so that was kind of cool. So that, that helped out a little bit, but we realized, um, uh, at that point that on busy days, we needed to have three people in there. And that's when I figured out like, man, just passing out cups takes time away from the barista. Um, but, you know, here's a, the, the one of the other things too, that I think is really important that I'd mentioned earlier that 
we are product over profit. Like I want the people that come to our trailer, not only have the experience of a cool trailer, right? Something really unique, but I want my product to match that. Right. So um, that means that I'm quality, I'm pulling quality assurance on every single shot that I pull, right? Every time I dose out my porta filter, I'm weighing it. Um, every time I pull a shot, I'm timing it. Um, because I want, if, even if you have to wait a couple more minutes and you have the best cup of coffee of your life and it's consistent every single time you come, you're coming back, you know, and I've literally had customers say that to me. Um, and, uh, so that's one of the things that I've really focused on is, is product, right. And, and making sure that my coffee is the best that I can make it before it leaves that window. Um, and I have a lot of folks and some shops that I've um, kind of talked to around here. I wouldn't call them mentors, but I've just kind of asked questions. And they're like, well, when, when you get busy, you just kind of throw all that out the window. And I'm like, like, I don't want to be like that. You know, I don't want profit, a profit over product. I want you to have the best cup of coffee that you can get around here, you know? And so I really focus on that. And I, I, I read some articles um, and it was like, hey, man, if you just if you start working the weighing into your workflow, you'll be fine. And that's what we did, um, you know, and it, it was hard at first. And I felt, and there were times where I kind of just wanted to skip the scale um, and go to, you know, just timing shots, which does tell you a ton. Um, but I'm like, no, that's not what I want. I want you to walk away. Love, absolutely loving your cup of coffee. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of kind of what we did uh, with that. Um, and it's worked out really well. No, that's, that's super cool. And I, I definitely agree with that. Like the other thing too, is, um, because you do have your, you know, your, you're still your Navy job. Mm -hmm. Like that's one thing too, I think that's pretty beneficial. Like you don't have to be super profitable. So you, you can kind of focus more on quality checks and making sure your systems are really in, in a, in a good place. And sure. I think that's a problem with a lot of people kind of when they start something, say, you know, you're, you're kind of having to do it out of necessity because you may not have a job or it is your job and, you know, no fault of their own, but profit does have to be more, more of like a, you know, kind of at, at the front of things because sure. they're having to pay for, you know, their, their livelihood and stuff. But yeah, so yeah. And that's, that's kind of the way I'm kind of looking at it too. Like the way I'm going to try to keep my job mm. as much as I can kind of, kind of, you know, on the same thing with, with what you're doing. And I'm thinking about doing the same thing too, then kind of like hiring some people because I want to like create a good team. Mm. And I'm like, you know, you, you've spoken about it and I watch Nick Bear and them for on YouTube and stuff. And I just, I like that mentality of like building out a really good team, mm. making sure they're, you know, taken care of. And that's going to carry you much further than you will kind of on your own, you know, Absolutely. and like what they do on the days you're at work, you know, it's going to make your business a success, you know, whenever you get out five years from now and maybe you'll have a brick and mortar by then and, and who knows, but so heck yeah, dude. So you definitely building out a pretty good little team. So you got three employees now or. Yeah, she's the, the third one starts on Saturday. Um, unfortunately I'll probably be losing my brother-in-law. Um, and he and I are like, I call us coffee nerds now because like we, we got really big into latte art. Um, and we went and took a professional, you know, uh, class a couple weeks okay, ago. Okay. That's, that's your brother-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and it's kind of like a newfound thing for both of us, like the coffee, right. And being excited about it. And I've just had this fascination with, with latte art. Right. Um, and so, yeah, building just a solid team that, um, I'm really big on them being able to do latte art, right. And not because it's latte art, but because when you can do latte art, that means you have properly textured milk, right. I don't care if you can't legitimately do latte art, but if you have the milk to do it, you're, you're, you're texturing the milk, right. You're getting that silkiness that you want out of the milk that when people drink your coffee, they're like, wow, this is amazing. Um, and so just furthering the education, you know, I've got questionnaires when I hire, before I even have an interview with staff. Um, or with uh, future employees, potential employees, it literally goes through like, you know, are you introvert, extrovert? Have you had time with customer service? Are you, how, what kind of coffees have you made? You know, do you do this at home? Are you interested in, you know, furthering your education, you know, barista competitions, like, like you said, building that solid core. Um, and then, uh, like you said, with being at the Navy, you know, kind of ex uh, inspecting what you're expecting, right? So I, and I tell my staff this, I'll, I, we've got a lot of regulars now that come and I'll literally, I'll find them on Facebook because they've liked our page. And I'm like, hey, how was your service today? You know, it was a coffee, is it consistent like it has been? 
and you know just to to double check to make sure the product is still coming out the way and and i don't hide that from them right they know that i do that um and that keeps everything in check right like it, it shows too that the owner cares right um and then it also so makes the customer feel good like hey man he's reaching out of the blue reaching out to me yeah um that's, that's above and beyond nate yeah you know and and i try but that's what you that's what i want to do and that's kind of how I've led my military career, you know, like I, I want to set the standard. I don't want anybody to set it for me. You know, I want to be, and I mean this in the best way possible, but I want to be the best. Right. And, and to do that, I have to put in the effort and customer service, customer service and product. Um, you know, the first, the very first matcha tea that I served, I served the wrong, I needed to do a half a teaspoon, three. So a teaspoon and a half, um, of matcha. And I did a tablespoon and a half of matcha and, uh, and the lady was like, oh, it's really strong. She's like, it's not bad, but it's, you know, and I'm like, man, what do I do? So she left. And then I looked in my, I, and this was a, the first day open, right? Uh, when we were legitimately open to the public. And um, I realized that I served her wrong. And I'm like, okay, how do I fix this? And I'm like, well, I've got square POS. I can find her name. And I found her name. And then I looked on our Facebook page and she had liked our Facebook page. So I, I reached out to her. I'm like, hey, I'm the owner of Abide. Um, I made you a matcha. I made the wrong, I had the wrong size serving in there. I want you to come back and the next one's on us. And, you know, she responds, she was like, this is phenomenal. You know, like this is the best customer service that I've had, but if you can couple customer service with a great product and go out of your way to make sure that you take care of people, they're going to take care of you. You know, and like I said, I, I do that for the employees. I try to do that for the customers too. Yeah. I almost feel it's like an unfair advantage when you do have like your mindset and kind of like the, the structure that y'all have been in and you know kind of up at that level to like come in and compete in the civilian world because it's like you you are going to operate at a different level and i remember when you first called me and i was like telling you like if, if you decide to do it and you actually do it like i have no doubt you're going to be a yeah. success with it you know like no doubt honest out of bet a million dollars <laughs> on it right there i still got a long way to go long no you're, you're gonna do good dude i can already tell um so what do you kind of, well, actually, I, I do want to go and kind of go over this. So how did you decide what was going to be in your coffee trailer? And then also what would you was going to like serve? Like, did you think about serving any pastries or think about serving any, like kind of like the smoothie drinks or anything like that, or like with a blender? Yeah. So we, um, uh, it, it was the keys to the shop that, um, reminded me to not bite off more than you can chew. Right. So when we, when we came up with this uh, concept, um, we were like, we want to do, cause we, we had just spent the past three years in Guam and acai was huge out there. Right. Um, and so we're like, we want to do acai. We want to do avocado toast. We want to do pastries. We want to do coffees and organic coffees and teas. And I realized like, it was just stressing me out, you know, cause I'm like, I gotta, I gotta create a business. I got to build a trailer. I don't know anything about how to make coffee. My wife is wanting us to do all this other stuff. I want to do this other stuff. And I'm like, what do I need to build a foundation? Like what I need to get really good at just the foundation, right? And that's what we do in, in, the, in my military community, right? Like crush the foundation, get it solid. Um, and so we just, we just, wipe, we we're like, what do we do? And so we sat down and talked and we wiped everything off the table, but our organic coffees and teas. Um, we were like, let's get that down 100%. Let's get our workflow down. Let's be able to serve serve customers do it well and we'll slowly start adding things um and so uh lindsay makes phenomenal every all of our products are organic um like freshest cleanest simplest ingredients possible um all of our syrups are organic holy cacao um our sauces are organic our alt milks are organic um and so uh we that's how we live our life um and i do the same sourcing we do the same researching for the coffee trailer and for the products that we put out to our customers the same that we do for our family right um and you know one example is decaf coffee um one of the reasons why we weren't carrying that for a while is because of the chemical process that it goes through to extract the caffeine caffeine the caffeine to make it decaf right and that's it's a harsh chemical process but I don't want me personally, we don't want to put that in our body. So we're like, how do, how do we find a cap, a decaf process that meets our standard? And so we, we hold this, I would not serve anything out of my trailer that I wouldn't serve in my family. Right. So, um, that was, that was kind of our foundation was okay. 
we know we want organic, clean ingredients. That's where we're starting from. Um, and so then we went back to traditional coffees. I'm like, all right, what are my staple traditional coffees? Looked at those um, and then looked at our teas. We have matcha, Earl Grey, Moroccan mint. Um, and then uh, we have, uh, um, you know, our, our typical espresso line and our lattes and we do ice drinks. We don't do anything blended, um, especially in a trailer uh, with having small three compartment sinks and having to wash a blender out every single time is just is going to be a headache. So I haven't even, I haven't even messed with that. Um, I typically do a lot of ice drinks. So, um, and so, yeah, so we just kind of structure our, our menu off traditional coffees, um, uh, you know, macchiata, traditional macchiatas, uh, you know, having, having cortados, um, traditional cappuccinos. Um, and so we built it based off of that. We did some signature drinks that, um, that my wife created that have just been, you know, kind of has medicinal purposes to it. We, we have a lavender honey latte that uses, um, local, the local honey here, the registered bee farm. We top that with uh, bee pollen, like, you know, just kind of doing something cool. So we have a very small section of signature drinks, and then we have your traditional coffee drinks and teas. Um, and then, uh, yeah, man, we, and then we spent countless hours creating spreadsheets. Like literally I know to a cent of how much it costs to build every single drink. Right. So I can, so I can price our menu properly. Right. So I can try to keep the lowest price possible because I know exactly what goes into a cup. And that was a headache <laughs> uh, yeah. without a doubt. Um, but it, but it's needed, you know, I, I, again, I'm, I'm obsessive compulsive and I want to know everything about my business. I want to know what's coming in. I want to know what's going. Um, and uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's kind of how we, we came about it. We did a lot of research, looked online at some of the coffee shops that we've really enjoyed going to and saying, hey, what did they serve? Um, and so now we're, after we got our, um, you know, serving uh, our coffee well, we, we took on uh, mobile ordering last week. Um, and now we're getting that down pat. We're working out those kinks. And then the next thing we'll move on to, hopefully in the next few months will be uh, organic sourdough pastries because my wife makes killer organic sourdough pastries like pop tarts, cinnamon rolls. Oh, it's phenomenal. Oh, so uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the next step. Um, but yeah, that would be my recommendation to you and to anybody else. Don't bite off more than you can chew. You're going to, it's, you're going to drown. Um, and that's, and it's just a lot, a lot of stress um, that goes into that. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm definitely going through that phase right now where I'm thinking, you know, I can do smoothies and I can do, you know, this and I can do pastries and I can do like oatmeal or, you know, just all these crazy mm -hmm. things kind of going into your mind. And it's like, wait, 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 like, like you're saying, <laughs> like, do you have the room? Like you, you still got to like figure out like the sinks and everything and like what, you know, so yeah, yeah, totally. uh, yeah it's definitely one of them things. You, your mind starts just cranking out all these like ideas, what you think you should do, but you know, what, what are you good at? What, like, sure. what do you kind of know? And yeah, that's probably what I kind of need to do too. Just like the other thing, you don't have to come out swinging at mm. everything, trying to make the most money. Cause again, you have that, that job that's already kind of, you know, sustaining you, but yeah. Yeah. So now you can kind of throw out things and try them out. If you know, try the pastries out, try something else out. Mm. Um, so that's what, so that's the other thing too. So as far as like your, your, your ticket, you know, increasing your ticket, uh, I guess uh, amount, you know, so like when a customer comes in, say it's three dollars now, five dollars now. How do you get it ten? How do you get fifteen? Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think once yeah. you get like pastries and whatever else, like it could only help. But yeah. it's like, are you going to have to meet other regulations and permits whenever y'all start doing that? Um. So it depends. As long as we, um, as as a trailer, like if we can prep and make our meals, well, I would have to because the trailer can't do it. Um, but at our commissary, right? So then I can provide that food for the trailer as long as there's no food preparation going on um, in the trailer. And so uh, mm. essentially, as long as I'm basically serving ready to eat food, gotcha. um, that's how we can do that, right? Or uh, right now I could, I could get a local bakery as long as they have a wholesale permit and I could sell their items out of our truck. Um, because it's all ready to eat. So you just can't touch it with your hand, right? Um, so you got to have gloves or tongs or they have to be already wrapped. So that way you just hand them over. Um, so gotcha. that's kind of what governs that. Um, and that's, that's a sticking point for us is that, you know, we got two kids, uh, one's about to be one and the other's five. Um, with it being a smaller town, there's not really any certified kitchens here. The closest ones are like 45 minutes. And you know, my wife doesn't have it having to take care of the kids and, um, 
you know, then having to drive, you know, looking at an hour and a half round trip just in driving and then hours, you know, try to, to try to make these pastries just isn't feasible. Um, and we also knew that that would just tax us an incredible amount, you know, because this hasn't like, you know, it hasn't been easy on the family, uh, you know, going through everything that we've gone through with the Navy, you know, having 15 years in and, and being willing to throw all of that away. Um, and then trying to figure out like business and, um, you know, just, and being a dad, right. Being a husband. Um, so like, it's hard, you know, bottom line, it's hard. Um, it's stressful. Um, it's not easy. It's still, it's gotten better. Um, but it just wouldn't have been feasible with the pastries, you know, and that was kind of like the, the straw that we were like, that will break the camel's back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so, um, that's kind of our goal is to get it to where she can prepare, um, uh, the pastries again, you know, it's kind of the same thing. Like I, we want to set the standard and I feel like having the, how she makes it and as clean and, and awesome ingredients that we focus on. I think we can, I think we can do well with it. Do y'all have a cottage food law there? We do. Um, and unfortunately, you cannot sell cottage foods from, uh, they call them a mobile food dispensing vehicle, which is us. Um, and so we can't sell it out of it. Um, oh, wow. Unfortunately, yeah. And some other states may be a little bit different, um, but that that hindrance, that hindrance that's a hindrance for us. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. And what's, what espresso machine did you go with? Um, so I have a Simonelli uh, Appia um, two group. Um, it's a 110 volt, uh, you know, when you're in the trailer business, like powers, everything, you know, like how big of a generator are you going to have? How loud is that thing going to be? Um, and you and I've kind of talked a little bit about this, man. And that little thing has been a powerhouse. I, I literally like, I can't overrun it. One, I'm not a good enough barista to be able to, to overrun it. You know, like I haven't developed that workflow, but I mean, I, I, I say that, but I mean, I'm running, you know, both group heads and, and stretch and milk, you know, steam and milk at the same time, you know, so um, we, we run that thing to death and it just keeps up. It's been, it's been awesome. Would you suggest a one group or would you um, stick with you the know, two group? People, people make it happen with one group. Uh, even Jojo's espresso Taylor, he, he rocks a uh, single group head and he has, you know, no issues from what he was telling me a lot. Of, you'll get kind of a split, split house on that. Some folks are like, Hey, you don't need more than one group in a trailer. Um, but for us, I find, I, I find having a two group nice because I can crank out, I can crank out shots, um, you know, and stretch milk at the same time. And I can get, I feel like I can get more drinks through. Right. Um, but ours is super simple. You know, it's not a volumetric machine where it's got the scales and the drip trays. Like I literally, I'm old school, man. I got, I got, uh, two like Timex timers, uh, sitting right above my group heads, you know, like, and I'm hitting buttons up there. I'm, I'm getting crazy on, it. uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I would suggest a two group. Um, it's, I think if we had a single group, it would just, it would take a little bit longer, but yeah, you know, that's kind of one thing I was looking at too, like either two group or one group. And so there it's money though, you know, at whatever you yeah. can afford to be honest. Um, that was the thing. It's like the two groups, like literally double mm -hmm. and it's crazy. Yeah. And, and so. I went and the Appy is really not too bad. I think I ended up spending like right around seven, 7,000 on it. But, um, you know, we, we've got, I think I've, I spent about 10,000 in coffee equipment. So with the, the grinders, the espresso machine, uh, the bun drip, um, I think I was right around there for, for the four, you know, a bolt grinder, bun drip, espresso grinder and espresso machine. Yeah. Would you mind sharing like your total, what you have in from start to finish? Yeah. From, like um, so, September talking to basically yeah. uh, April yeah. starting up. So we ended up, um, I drove, uh, I drove a Subaru before I, before I decided to open this trailer. Um, and so I'm like, well, I gotta have something to pull this now. Um, so pulling it almost every day, uh, we went with a, a diesel truck, uh, the, the trailer, I haven't gotten it weighed yet, but it's probably right around 7,000 pounds. Um, but, uh, I just went ahead and got something that's built for towing. Um, and so I ended up and and prices have gone up even more now for, for trucks. Um, but I have about 38 in the truck and then probably around 40, probably 43, 44 in the trailer. Now that's turnkey though. That's literally every, all my consumables, having coffee, having syrups. Um, and like you and I talked about, like I completely 
I didn't disregard, but I didn't think it'd be as expensive as it was, but getting all the small things you need, like, you know, fro uh, frothing pitchers, stirs, mats, um, chemical, like cleaning stuff. Um, I mean, you, anything you can think of, like whiteboards, like it, there was just a lot more that I didn't take into consideration. Um, but so we're all in all, um, I would say that I'm 50, what is that, 50, 60, 74. I'm probably just a little over 80 um, into it. Um, but, you know, if you got your own truck, I had to buy a new one, right? I traded in my car and I got a truck. And some people might not have to do that. Um, but I, we also didn't really hold back on um, how we decked out the trailer because we really wanted to make, we wanted it to be special. Um, and so I was, you know, kind of a field of dreams, like, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> and so that's kind of, kind of what we, what we did, but, um, but yeah, somewhere right around there. What I've kind of noticed too, is like, you know, you can look at your trailer and like, you can tell you took pride in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, I almost want to support businesses that are unique, different, and that you can just tell like the people took pride in what they did, you know? And like, uh, you know, Rev over here, like the, the mm -hmm. coffers over here, like they're like that, like you go into yeah. their place and it's nice. You talk to Nate Johnson and he's just like super cool dude. And it's like to take pride in what they do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know. It's just like, if you, you can, if you can show that it's not just some metal, you know, coffee trailer, whatever, just out there. Right. Like you, you took the time to build it out how you wanted to your standards and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I don't know, to me, I, I think that's pretty special. So, yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And that was one of the things that Taylor, um, had mentioned he's like man one of my biggest draws for people is the trailer and he was like if you can do it if you can build it build it yourself um you know it was a it was a love-hate relationship like i mean it, i would come home and i had so much like on my list of things to do for the trailer that i got i got so focused on what i hadn't accomplished right i would accomplish a lot during the day um, and then I would come home and I would just be depressed. Like I would come home, my wife's like, what's wrong with you? Like you just worked on the trailer all day. And I'm like, well, I didn't get this done. I didn't get that done, but I was so, I had to shift my, my thought, my thought process. Right. And what I was focusing on, cause I focused so much on this list that needed to get done when I wasn't even looking at this list that got done. Right. I was just so focused on the end that I kind of stopped enjoying it for a little while. And it was more of a stressor. Um, and it, put stress on me, on the family. Um, and so, yeah, so it was just building it out. Um, myself was nice, but it was, it was a difficult. And then once I finally shifted and my wife was like, why don't you write down everything that you accomplished today on that trailer? And I did. And it was like a list of like 20 things. And I'm like, Oh man, I should shift the way that I'm thinking because it's going to be healthier for me. Right. I'm going to be happier. Um, so yeah, that way, if you got, if you do end up going that route, I would definitely suggest like, being gracious with yourself, you know, like, especially being the first time, like hold yourself to a high standard, but be okay and know that you're going to make mistakes. Um, uh, it, it, it made my life a whole lot better, um, towards the end when I was building it out and I wasn't so stressed about every fine detail, um, of what was going on in that trailer. Yeah. That's some really good advice. And I think that's one of them things too, like you're starting a coffee trailer, you're starting a business, but it's what you're learning in that process, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, all these little mindset mind shifts, like everything you're mentally preparing yourself for and stuff like that and figuring out and getting through like it's, it's growth. And I think that's the coolest thing about any of these little endeavors that you do, whether it's a roaster or a coffee shop or even a bakery or whatever you're trying to do, you know, like you just, you have to figure out that you have to beat your mind. It feels like, you know, because your mind is constantly going to be telling you like you're, you're not going to be as fast as Nate. You're not going to be as good as this person or like, you know, sure this dude's already at this level over here, right across, across the town. Like they're ahead of you. Why even start now? You know, you start kind of just, just messing with your mind, you know, yeah. you just got to put it all out of your head and just, what did you get done today? That's, that's a really good way to kind of look at it. Like, what did I get accomplished today? Mm -hmm. That's a good way to look at it. So what's your plans going forward? Um, so we, I don't, I don't want it to stop here. You know, like I said, I really found a passion with coffee and I think we can continue to, to, um, excel and just do well. Um, so I really, I mean, we're, we're just North of an extremely busy tourist spot. Um, you know, when I was looking at the, when we were building out the trailer, I was just looking at the, um, the amount of tourism that, that comes through this area. Um, and the main artery that goes down to, 
the Emerald Coast um, down to the 38 beaches is, you know, five minutes from here. Um, and uh, I think in 2020, there was like 3.9 million people that visited this county, the beaches in this county. Um, and the main artery is, is what they call Highway 331. Um, and, you know, I was even getting into like how, well, okay, well, that's a good number, but how many flew, you know? And so like figuring out how many people actually flew. So now I'm looking at, you know, uh, now like 3.4 million people that most likely are driving this corridor, right? So I'm like, okay, drive through, you know, like that's what I want up there. I want a brick and mortar. Um, and we couldn't get that right now, like we said, for reasons before. Um, but that's that's where I want to see it um, eventually. Uh, I don't think I want to build another trailer, <laughs> uh, at least anytime in the near future, but definitely brick and mortar um, because I really... I really like the cafe feel, right? Like when I'm, when I've been gone traveling or I've been deployed um, and I've been able to just go sit in a coffee shop and just like, I don't know, there's just some, something comforting and warm about it. Right. Um, and so that's what I really wanted. And that's also kind of what drove the, the uniqueness of the trailer is I wanted to create an environment that people wanted to come to, even though it's a trailer, I want it to be special. And that's what I want for a sit down shop um, as well, you know, just kind of creating an environment and that's, you know, as us for Christ, as Christ followers, like we really want to plug into the community. That's, you know, the company, uh, uh, Abide Coffee and Company is like not, not a company, but the, the people that you surround yourself with, right? Kind of bringing that that face-to-face -face interaction back after COVID and all this stuff going on that has just kind of been lost like socially. Um, and so, yeah, it's a brick and mortar for that, for sure. You know, and that's kind of right. Sorry, there's a bug line. Um, but uh, right now we have our trailer uh, will be, it sets up in front of this open field where there's this pavilion and gazebo. Um, and it's what we want. We want people to come and hang out and just like be able to bring their kids, and throw Frisbee and do different things. You know, obviously you're not throwing Frisbee in a shop unless it's a massive yeah. shop, but uh, just a community, you know, and, and having a really cool place for people to come hang out. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. And like the, you know, going back to the military base thing, like I never really visited too many coffee shops in my hometown before mm -hmm. the military. But once you get to the military, it's like, you know, you get stuck in this place where you're having to meet everybody over again. It's like, yeah. you're going to go to a coffee shop and you'd sit there a lot and, you know, free internet and stuff like that. And yeah. it was just, it was, it was that safe place to kind of go and like figure out what you're going to do with this new place and whatever. And yeah, yeah it's kind of how coffee shops kind of, it almost seems like, for me, it's like newness. Like it's, I always symbolize them like with a new place that I went and like, it's kind of where I went to kind of like regroup and figure out like what I want to, what do I want to do here? What is there to do here and stuff like that, you know? So I always kind of thought about that when I was in the military as well. And then, I, yeah, the other thing too is with the banks, like having a coffee trail, I think is going to be beneficial too. Cause when you do want to go open up an actual brick and mortar and a bank can see like the numbers and stuff you've had over the past year or two years, Cause that was one ding for me, the place I was trying to get. Mm. Um, it wasn't even so much like the capital and stuff, but it was like the experience, you know, like you, you are putting up this much, but like, you don't have any experience like you don't have any numbers or whatever. So all these, sure. all this is just like a guesstimate. Yeah. But if you can bring up numbers, you can say, well, this is what we've been doing in a coffee trailer. Mm. Like, this is what we plan to do here. We already have this dedicated customer base and you, and it's proof. you already have a proof of concept, you know? Yeah. So I yeah. think that's definitely, definitely beneficial to start like that. Yeah. And it, 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 it's also nice too, when you, if you haven't ran a business before um, or owned one, I guess, uh, or at least owning something new, like a coffee business. Um, one thing that it's allowing us to do right now is um, I'm able to create an employee handbook, right? I'm creating all my cup, my employee expectations. I'm creating recipes. I'm creating cup codes. I'm creating standard operating procedures for opening and closing, right? Um, that will all be transferable to a brick and mortar, you know? So I'm, I'm able to invest less money, um, work on my product, work on me as a business owner, um, work on my administrative section of my business, um, all for way less, you know, and with, without the stress, you know, to be honest, I mean, you think about like what you got to pay for rent and electricity and, and insurance now granted there there's there's overhead on a trailer um but it's not as much you know and so it's kind of a peace of mind you know like man i can move this thing wherever i want or at the end of the day if it's not working out well i can sell it you know there's there's so many people that want to buy a trailer and get into the business that there's multiple avenues of out um but it does also it allows you to really start like you said like we keep talking about building that strong foundation of 
of creating all of these documents that you need and all of these procedures and standards um, for brick and mortar eventually, you know? So a lot of the work's gonna be done now. So when I go into a brick and mortar, um, it'll be, it'll, it'll go smoother for sure. Yeah. So what's the chances of you getting stationed anywhere else? Are you going to be able to ride it out there in Florida? Uh, I've got two more years here for, I say for sure, nothing's for sure. Um, but I, I think I have two more years here. Um, and then after that, I'll be at 17 years. Um, and it's really, I don't know what's going to happen at that point. Um, typically we'll rotate out, but just given, um, again, kind of how things have played out for me in the military, I, I don't know. Um, and this is still, this could absolutely still be my fallback. You know, maybe I, maybe I'm not in the military, uh, after next year, who knows? So I'm, I'm really, this is kind of just my, you know, in my back pocket at this point and I'm just preparing it and, and building it. Um, so yeah, there's a chance I may move out of here, but that's the great news about the trailer is I'll tow it wherever I go, you know, as long yeah. as I don't go overseas, <laughs> Heck Yeah, uh, but it's going wherever I go for the most part. Nice. Always have a backup plan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, shoot, dude. Uh, do you ever plan to get into roasting? Um, eventually. Yeah. Um, I would love to do that. I, I had, I was going to buy a roaster. Um, you and I actually talked about that and I backed off because I realized I was starting to try to chew more than I could swallow. Yeah. Right. Um, and just trying to be just, ed I mean, to be honest, like coming from when I decided to start this shop, like I didn't know anything about coffee. I didn't know coffee was a cherry plant right? Like her cherry tree. I had no idea. Um, I was just like, oh, coffee beans. And I started educating myself and I started, uh, especially like the SCA's intro to coffee and just started immersing myself into the, to the coffee world. Um, and so I need to get that down a little more. Um, and then I eventually want to get into roasting, but it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, I could cut my overhead by roasting. But if I tried to start roasting and doing my own beans right now, I probably would also cut my customer base because <laughs> they'd be like, this is not good. Um, you know, so what what sacrifice does that come with? So I'll probably get into it and roast for a year at least um, and get really good at that before I start trying to, to turn any product out of my own stores. Um, but yeah, I, at this point, man, I though I'm going to keep everything as open and keep my eyes wide open and just accept and kind of work through everything that comes at me or, you know, in potential opportunities. Yeah. I think with your attention to detail and like all that, like if you ever got into the roasting game, you would, you'd be consumed by it. Like yeah. You would actually eat it up. So it's, yeah. it's definitely fun. It's kind of, it's, it's that tedious thing, you know, where you just, you, you want to change all these, it's kind of like espresso, you know? Um, yeah, I think that's, I th and the other thing too, I think it's super cool to start, you know, getting really good at coffee, like, like you was doing with espresso and like everything else, because once you go to roasting, you're able to taste a lot of the, you know, like different notes or whatever, stuff like that. Like a lot of people get into roasting coffee, like right off the bat. And it's like, you don't really know what good coffee tastes from bad coffee. That was me in the beginning, you know, like, sure. yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really know what I was roasting. If it was good or bad, it was just, it all tasted like coffee and it takes, yeah. you know, a good long time to you know, actually get where you are tasting, you can taste things, pull out different notes and stuff like that. And you figure out yeah. like, Oh, different origins kind of roast differently and you can't roast everything one way. And yeah, it's a yeah. long little process. So, but yeah, yeah dude, I, I definitely hope you get into it. Cause yeah, that'd, that'd I definitely, fun, so. I would like to right now. I mean, we're really happy. We've got, like I said, all of our products are organic. So we have, um, we get our beans from Sweetwater Roasters in Gainesville, um, Florida and all their stuff's fair trade organic. And they just do a, a bang up job for me right now. Um, and so I'm like, well, they do a really good job at this. So we'll, we'll pause and pump brakes on it. But just a little plug in there for us for Sweetwater. But they've, they've been phenomenal. So if you guys are, if, anybody, if you're ever down this way, man, they're, they're, you, well, you can come try their coffee for me. But, uh, but yeah, they're pretty phenomenal. Heck yeah, dude. I'm actually going to be coming over this summer sometime. I'm, I think the, the wife and all them want to go either Pensacola or Destin or somewhere over there. So yeah. I figure if we I'm make like it that 40, far. 40 minutes from Destin, dude. Yeah, that's why I told him. If we make it that yeah. far, I'm going to go see Nate for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, well, heck yeah, dude. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. Do you have anything you want to share or kind of plug or anything? Or No, man, I just, I, I, I just I, thank you for this opportunity. You know, I feel like it's, uh, I feel like I'm not good enough to be doing this, you know, because I'm, I mean, I'm so new at it. Um, but, you know, there's definitely a lot to be that I can share just, uh, building the trailer out, the business planning, 
um, you know, and just, like I said, just kind of sharing, sharing my heart, my passion with it. So I, I certainly feel like I'm definitely underqualified uh, to be doing a podcast. So I just appreciate you taking me on and taking some time to chat. Yeah, no, dude, I wanted to like get you on because it's one of the things you, if you talk to somebody, you know, five years after they start, it's all, everything was, you know, went, went perfect. Like everything was yeah. good. The relationship was fine. Like, yeah. you know, everything was just went to, went to plan, but you know, when you, when you speak to somebody right after starting, it's like you, you, you still remember all of it, you know, um, and it's super cool to kind of hear your story and how fast everything kind of changed, you know, like September, you never pulled a shot and now yeah. you have like, you know, your coffee trailer rolling and employees yeah. and stuff like that. So it's very, very inspirational. I kind of, sometimes I step back and I'm like, all right, like, you know, like this failed thing I was trying to do failed, you know, like crash and burn out or whatever. So let's, uh, regroup and you're definitely been one I'm kind of thinking about a lot yeah. like you know so I think that's pretty cool uh, so, you know though I mean that's uh, failure is a good thing you know like oh, it, yeah. it, it can kind of close doors for you that you didn't need to walk through and, exactly. and open up other ones you know and and learn from it oh, gosh I felt and not just in coffee but in so many things right yeah um, but but dude you you also you know have that mindset too like that you have passion and that's really like you can't teach passion right you cannot teach that yeah very um, true and you just kind of have to find that in you and if you've got it and it's something you want to do man just go do it and, and and crush it you know and don't stop till you until you get what you want Heck yeah, dude. Well, I'm probably going to be calling you over the next few months while I figure yeah. this out. So. Well, I, it's great that the, the the shoe is like, I get to help you. I was telling my wife this tonight, you know, it's like you got, you helped me out. And I like, you were the very first, you were the first person that I talked to in the coffee world at all. First person. And now it's just kind of cool to like be able to help, you know, because after we posted on um, some of these Facebook groups that we've, you know, forums that we've been a part of really got a lot of help. Um, and people started reaching out to me and being like, Hey man, do you have time to chop talk? And I'm like, yes, let me make time for you. You know, because again, I wouldn't have been able to do it without people willing to take time out of their schedule to help me, you know? Oh so yeah. You call anytime, man. Heck yeah, dude. Well, I'm going to be out there this summer. So I am going to hit you up. Yeah. And, uh, that's pretty much it, it dude. I, awesome, I definitely man. appreciate you coming on and, uh, for sure. Yeah. You know, put some plugs in for IG and Facebook. Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll definitely link all that below and okay, cool. I'll tell them to go follow you. And uh yeah, y'all actually have a really good your wife does your your IG account. Yeah. Yeah. You you got lucky there, dude. <laughs> like, well, it started with you because you were like, get start branding early, you know, like yeah. get your name out there. Yeah, and, I'm a firm believer in that. Well, that was you that started all that because I told her, um, I was like, Hey, this this is what Rob says. We gotta do it. And she was like, All right, cool. And she's been in social media for a long time now. Um, with her businesses and she's just got an eye for that stuff like i'll literally i'll post stuff and she'll delete it and then she'll repost it of how it actually needs to be and like how she filters the photos so it's pretty funny she's like stop doing that <laughs> yeah just just let her do it nate yeah yeah for no, sure. uh, yeah it's one of the things everybody's like you know they want to start posting whenever they start and it's like man start whenever you first have the idea and tell the story you know and yep. i've followed y'all's story and y'all have been crushing that so Thanks, Heck man. Yeah, dude. Thanks for tuning in to the Coffee Runs Deep podcast. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode. Speaking to individuals like Nate just get me fired up, and that attitude of his is contagious. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review below and tell me. Reviews help these podcast episodes get seen and to grow. If you'd like to follow Nate and Abide Coffee Company, I will leave his social handles below in the description or in the show notes. They share on IG where the trailer will be on a regular basis in Freeport, Florida, just east of Destin. So go check them out and get some coffee. I truly appreciate everyone for listening, and I will see you next week. Love you.